On a clear, still night, when there is a full moon rising high in the sky, what can we realistically see? The moon appears to be a slightly blotchy grey disk, but if you concentrate, you can start to make out very specific shapes. Firstly, let's get a handle on the actual size of the moon. The small disk you are looking at is approximately 3,474 kilometers wide. Or perhaps a better way to imagine it is if we dropped the island of Ireland, which is approximately 486 kilometers in length, onto the moon, it would look like this. The moon is a big rock. Now, the moon appears to have a two-tone surface, a dark region and a significantly brighter region. The dark region is made up of lunar seas or maria. It's not that these areas are actual seas, but long ago astronomers thought the moon had large bodies of water on its surface and the name stuck. These are in fact large low-lying plains formed by ancient volcanic eruptions which took place roughly 3 to 3.5 billion years ago. The iron-rich nature of the eruptions give the Maria their distinctive dark appearance. The lighter areas are called the highlands and this surface is older than the Maria. It is as old as the moon itself, approximately 4.5 billion years ago. Because it is older, it has much more craters caused by the impacts of meteors crashing into the moon's surface. If viewing conditions are good and you continue to look at the lunar disk, you will see that the Maria form separate distinctive shapes. And because the same side of the moon always faces Earth, the shapes never change. It may take a while for your eyes to adapt to the dark, and indeed it may take a few months of looking out for the full moon, but you will eventually be able to distinguish definite shapes, just like the ancient astronomers who had only the naked eye to examine the moon. Each sea is officially known by its Latin name, Mare, being Latin for sea, and by its English name. There's the seas of Serenity, Tranquility, Fertility, Nectar, Crisis, Vapours, Cold, Rain, the Oceans of Storms, Moisture, Clouds, Islands and Knowledge. In addition, there are thousands of craters on the lunar surface, but practically all of them are too small to see with the naked eye, apart from a few giant craters such as Copernicus, which is 93 kilometers wide and is named after the Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus, famous for declaring that the Earth moved around the Sun. There's Grimaldi, which is 173.5 kilometers wide. Because it lies at the edge of the Moon's spherical surface, from our perspective, we are seeing it at an angle and so it appears smaller. It is named after Francesco Maria Grimaldi, a 17th century Italian mathematician and physicist. And thirdly, Tycho, which is 86 kilometers wide and is named after Tycho Brahe, a Danish astronomer whose naked eye observations allowed Johannes Kepler to accurately calculate the paths of the planets around the sun just before the invention of the telescope. Finally, as the 50th anniversary of the first Apollo landing on the moon is nearing, you might like to know where the six Apollo missions landed around the face of the moon. And so, when you next have the opportunity to look at a full moon, you might see more than just a blotchy grey disk. I wish you clear skies.